to the middle of the west coast of New Zealand, South Island, where our scientists are going to face their toughest challenge yet. Over the next six weeks, we're going to be battling with the elements to solve a series of science challenges using only simple tools, a bag of basic kit, and an awful lot of scientific brain power. Our adventurers are... Mike Bullivant, our creative chemist. He's also a stand-up comedian and keen outdoorsman. Kathy Sykes, an irrepressible physicist and extreme sports fanatic. Mike Lee, he's a biologist with attitude. He's also a car mechanic and a martial arts expert. Ellen McCauley's an intrepid botanist from Missouri, whose second home is the Amazon. Jonathan Hare's a physicist with a science brain and an artist's eye, a true renaissance man. And me, Kate Humble, here as the odd job girl. Together we are Rough Science. We've travelled to the other side of the world 12,000 miles to a harsh and primeval terrain, the west coast of New Zealand. It's one of the wettest places on earth, over 5 metres of rain a year. For over 150 years, prospectors braved the mountains, floods and avalanches for just one reason, to hunt gold. They don't know it yet, but our team must do the same. It's going to be a real test of their scientific knowledge. This is an old sawmill. This is going to be our base of operations for the next six weeks. We've got power, we've got water, we've and got transport. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't get too used to all those comforts because you're going to be doing a lot of work out in the field too. The half-abandoned sawmill is a perfect base for operations. It's still full of tools and materials and it's close to the old gold fields. <laughs> now then, let's get down to business. The challenges. Basically, collectively, I want you to use your science skills to strike it rich this week. Now, 150 years ago, uh, there was a massive gold rush just north of here. And so, Mike and Ellen, you're going to be following in the footsteps of those old pioneers and seeing how much gold you can find in Mendare Hills. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a casino. <laughs> And Jonathan, if you can also find gold, but take a slightly higher tech approach and make a metal detector. <laughs> Mike and Kathy, obviously we need to find out exactly how rich we're going to be, and we're only going to know that if we know exactly how much gold we've found. So we need a really accurate weighing balance. <laughs> so you've got everything in here. All this gear, you can use anything you find here, anything outside, use these natural resources, and all the things in here should help you out for this week. So have a good old rummage. You've got three days. <laughs> the trunk holds surprises, like a bag of sugar and old radios, that could help with this week's challenges. Which bits they pick and how they use them, the scientists must decide. So, the team need an accurate balance, a metal detector, and gold. Lots of it. Because what I haven't revealed to them is their ultimate challenge. By the end of the series, they have to make a pure gold souvenir. Hey guys, how much do you think we're going to get? Because we need to know whether we need to measure milligrams or grams or boulders or... Grams. Yeah, grams. grams. No way. Yeah, yeah. Gold is so dense. Look, if, if so we... how much are you going to get? You're just going to get little bits in there, aren't you? We're being optimistic. Up, up to that level. If we don't get five grams okay. of gold, I'm resigning. We're okay. talking early retirement. <laughs> The old-time pioneers could take months to find gold, but with just three days to complete their task, our team needs a flying start. They say, Mike, that they need us to be able to weigh between 5 and 20 grams. Right, yeah. I, I don't, don't think them. I believe them. <laughs> I don't think there's any way. The easiest thing is just make a simple balance, but try and make it accurate and precisely as possible. So just like uh, a lever and an arm resting like that, and put yeah. one pound there and one pound on the other side, and then balance it up?
Glad you did that. <laughs> so, we need a fast-flowing river with lots of bends where the current can slow down and dump the gold washed out of the mountains. Mike and Ellen have spotted a potential site, the Wateroa River, 25 miles north. It looks good from the air, but they'll have to check their hunch on the ground, which means getting their hands dirty, panning the river gravel for gold dust. <laughs> Jonathan, the master craftsman of the team, is already hard at work. He's making a metal detector that generates a constant tone. Now that tone should change if the detector moves over any piece of metal, including gold. I have made one of these before, actually, about ten years ago. Um, so I vaguely know what I'm doing, I think. I just like making things. I've always been interested in making things. I probably make something a week. Um, the bit I'm making at the moment is the search coil. So it's the bit that you hover over the ground to pick up the metal. So I hope you can pick up some gold. Michael and Kathy have discovered that making a set of scales is not that easy. <laughs> the idea is that when I want to come along and weigh the bit of gold, big chunk of gold, uh, you're, gonna, gonna, you're, you're optimistic, <laughs> aren't you, Kathy? <laughs> I'm going to put it in there. Yeah. And all I've got to do is run this kind of backwards and forwards. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> what simply is like that? As simply as that. I mean, you, you know, we're only halfway through day one and you look like you've more or less finished. No, we've still got quite a long way to go, I think. Yeah, we've got one of the major hitches to overcome. Which is? Well, we've got no weights. If you're using a kitchen scale, you'd have your gram, two grams, your kilogram. Yeah. We haven't got that. Right. And it, it just sounds so trivial, but it, it's actually quite tricky. I mean, the good thing is, we've got the sugar, we know it's 500 grams, yeah. and so we've got a starting point. But, yeah. you know, we want to be measuring five grams, not 500. So we're going to have to break this down really accurately, not lose any sugar, <laughs> have little spoonfuls in the end that just say weigh a gram. It's not easy and it's not quick, but Ellen and Mike claim that the tricks to give your grit a vigorous shake. Now gold is one and a half times heavier than lead, so the theory is it'll sink to the bottom of the pan and a gentle wash sweeps away the lighter grit. Oh, and there is a reason for those balaclavas. New Zealand sand flies. Horrible, biting bugs with a taste for human blood. How are you getting along then? Yeah, well, it's getting there. The basic um, coil is there, so it's almost like a sort of metal detector. Oh, it does, I mean, it does look exactly like. So, is the idea that if you're going over, if everything was kind of finished, if I went over that spanner, it would all start going mad? Well, not mad, hopefully, <laughs> but yeah. So, there'd be a bleep or something, a tone. As you bring it near, mm. the tone would change. Just sorry, when you say coil, Okay, this wooden thing right. um, has got a coil. Oh, yes, around. I can see the wires in there. So. Okay, so that'll pick up the metal. Okay. So the electronics for that will be in here, right. this little box. And because it rains so much in New Zealand, we might do. I'm going to put it in there to protect it. Brilliant. Then we're going to have a uh, battery in there. Yeah. And the bits for the electronics are going to come from the radios. But I'm going to use one of the radios as well as an uh, amplifier. So, so you we'll have a speaker, we'll have a, one of the radios here. So you'll, you'll actually be able to h hear the change in frequency yep. um, created by that coil? Yeah, through the loudspeaker. You are ingenious. What's, what's the next stage now? I've got to look at all the radios, see what components there are there, find the, right, well, the ones that would do this job, um, make a little circuit, solder it up, put it in there, wire it up to the radio. So there's quite a lot to do. What do you think the uh, probability is of being able to test it out maybe middle of tomorrow? Cross fingers. You know, Mike? Uh -huh. I think I've got gold. Look at that. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if I've got... 
Hey, there it yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, we're in, we're in. This is a good spot. And where did you get yours from? I got it from right behind that big boulder. And mine was just down here, just there. Right, so we pan at specific points and mark the points where we get lucky strike. Yeah, with piles of rocks. The pressure's on to collect as much gold as possible. Ultimately, they've got to get enough to make a souvenir, but they don't know that yet. Right now, the worry's to get enough for the balance. <laughs> it's, an, it's an awful lot more fiddly than I ever imagined it would be. I've moved on from using the sugar to nails, because sugar's a nightmare to work with. It soaks up water, so the weight changes over time. Um, and also, you can't really count out sugar grains unless you're looking at tiny, tiny weights, whereas I can count out individual nails. So these are much easier to work with, and it just means I've got to go from one amount of sugar and balance that against an amount of nails. And then I can actually work out approximately how much each of these weighs, and I can use these as my kind of a unit of weight. After hours of effort for little reward, our prospectors have to make a decision. They've found gold, but panning is much too slow. We're going to scale it up. Okay, so why don't we mimic how the river flows? Where we've got water flowing, so the light stuff flows off, and the heavy stuff sinks to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Do you, like, build a box. Yeah. And flow some river over it. Our prospectors have to make a wooden sluice box to filter the gold out of the gravel and speed up production. It's now the end of day one. Jonathan's designing his electronic circuit, whilst Mike and Kathy are wrestling with the tricky problem of turning a bag of sugar into weights small enough for the scales. After a long, hard day, the evening meal is put together by a local chef, Ricky, and the team get a chance to inspect the day's takings from the river. And then you get a bad pan, you've got, you know, these, one pan I have this one tiny little plate that I was in. Uh -huh. Kathy's doing her maths, trying to work out the weight of a nail, but Michael has other ideas. <laughs> and uh, we're having trouble dividing up nails and sugar. Have you got any scales back at your... Yeah. Cool. Do you reckon you could maybe weigh these nuts and see how many nuts in a gram, or maybe how much this little nut Hang on. Mike, we can do it with science. Look, look, I'm a scientist. You find the easiest way. It's not called cheating, it's artistic thinking, okay? The team's verdict was no cheating. Mike L. has to be a real scientist. The west coast of New Zealand is notorious for its downpours. Life at the river will be very difficult today and more muscle is needed. So, Mike L is pulled off the scales and instead is putting together the materials for the wooden sluice box. We've got some prezzies for you. It's going to be perfect. How's it going? make it look a whole lot better. You ready for a bit of work, Mike? <laughs> In this weather, <laughs> no chance. The trough-like sluice box needs something to trap the gold flakes as they're washed through. In a wood next to the river, Ellen uses her botanical skills to solve the problem. What we're looking for in particular is some of this. They call it the ponga. That's the Maori name. It's just a big fern with a, a tall stem. They're the things that were alive when the dinosaurs were around. So they're really ancient plants. All right, this is the aerial roots on the outside of the stem. It's roots that catch nutrients and water on the outside of the fern normally. And this will catch our gold. Great. This is what we're looking for. Yeah, okay. I'll go okay. off that direction and go for that. Yeah, thanks. Can I take that as a guide? Yeah, please do. <laughs> At the old sawmill, Jonathan's building the circuit that will amplify the tiny change in tone when metal is detected. Today I've got tons to do and I'm a bit, well, just a bit anxious about it because I've got to get all these components off the radios and then put them together in the right way. So I'm a little bit anxious, to say the least. The heart of the metal detector circuit uses transistors and transistors amplify. The transistors are the little black things so I know what they are. I've got to work out the way they're wired up. And then I've got to get enough bits and pieces to make sure that I, my circuit will work with them. Uh, 
Last night I counted that there are 1,268 nails in this bag. I've had to add a few extra. But now I know that that plus the extra few makes 500 grams. I can work out exactly how much every single nail weighs. We've got to hack this punga up. Uh, let me show you what, uh, what needs doing. Punga. The thing we need. Yeah, this punga wood. So this is what we're going to use for our industrial scale sluice. Yeah, it looks a bit like a loofah, but, but that's exactly what it is. I mean, we, we're passing the, uh, the gravel and the sand over, lots of these in a row. Mm -hmm. And as uh, we, using water, and as it flows over there, we're hoping this is going to trap the gold into the gold flakes. Right. Yeah. How do you get it back out again? Ah, that's the secret. Yeah. <laughs> That'll come later. Yeah. I was telling Ellen that she looked like Maid Marion, sort of crossed with the Knight of the Round Table with that nice balaclava on. Whilst they build the sluice box, I get the chance to try out panning for myself. Well, ooh, sand flying my nose. I've been panning for about 20 minutes. And that is the sum total of my riches. Can you see any gold in there? Because <laughs> I can't. See, this is the fruit of your labour. Uh -huh. What we're going to do is tip all of the, uh, the stuff from the sites where we know there's alluvial gold uh -huh. that we've prospected yesterday. And then we'll uh, pour water in, and the water will flow down over these baffles here. And all it's doing is it, we're just recreating what's happening in the river with the boulders. So it's a matter of having a continuous water flow over this, and just washing all the sediment right. down, and then the gold will collect at the top. That's the theory. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put Leahy's patented sluice box to the test, eh? We're in the morning. We're in the morning. That's our first million. <laughs> like this? Yeah, that's it. I reckon, yeah. yeah. Look, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> this is a rather important moment because all the electronics is made. And I think I've tested it so that I know each bit is working, but I haven't actually tried everything together. So this is the moment where I'm first trying everything. So we've got the amplifier in here. We're using the radio as an amplifier. We've got battery, and we've got the electronics in the coil. So let's get a bit of metal and put it in the coil. Hey, it works! So it's actually working, the metal detector. So that is jammy that that works straight off. That's amazing. Oh, you're doing maths again. <laughs> mm. Can't resist. So, what's the news? Well, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed. I found that each of these nails yeah. um, weighs about 0.38 of a gram. About? 0.385 of a gram. So I'll be able to use these right now if I want to, yeah. to um, kind of match against the gold so that okay. I can use my balance to weigh the gold. I've built a new balance and it's going to be much, much more sensitive and I'm much more confident about this number than I was feeling yesterday. Okay, at the moment, you can hear the noise. Yeah. And uh, if you bring it across, there's a bit of metal there. Right. You'll see that the tone will change. If I was a mini person and I walked through that, would it work like the thing at the airport? Yeah, just exactly the same. So it's not that so massive bit of metal, of course. It is a massive piece of metal. If we found a piece of gold that big, all our problems would be solved. It certainly would. <laughs> it's late afternoon and super efficient Kathy is almost done. She's balanced one nail against a length of wire and can now divide that wire up into tiny weights, fractions of a gram. And tomorrow, her energy will be needed at the river. We're desperately short of gold for her balance. I have really surprised myself by how much I've enjoyed today, because anyone who knows me will say I'm just not a detailed person. And filling around with things, making them really precise, keep me out of the room, usually. And I've just been happy as Larry here, messing around, trying to make this more and more sensitive. And I'm just so pleased with it. So I'm happy to go to the river tomorrow, but given a choice, I'd probably rather stay here. Back at the river, 25 miles away, the rain and the sand flies have hit morale hard. I don't know how people could endure this, not the day after day. I mean, rough science is a nice job, but I've had enough of it after just one day. It is labour intensive, isn't it? Yeah. And didn't... the sand flies. You've got to trust Sorry. that that density is working, and that the gold is going to the bottom, that density and gravity. 
It's just faith in the process, isn't yeah. it? That you're collecting something. Yeah, but it's blind faith, isn't it? We don't know whether anything's here even now after all this work. That's right. We don't know if we can improve our technique. I mean, usually when we're doing something, we can figure out if we're getting better at it or not. Yeah. I know we're not going to get a nugget, but <laughs> <laughs> just <No>. three flakes. <laughs> So let's start on a positive note at the end of day two. We have a balance that's getting really very, very sensitive indeed. Kathy reckons that she's going to be able to weigh micrograms, which is useful because we ain't got much gold. But Jonathan is improving his detector's sensitivity, and him finding a nugget from the river may be our best hope. So tomorrow could be an interesting day. More of a gold panic than a gold rush, perhaps. Oh, lovely. Do you want to get a bit? Yeah, sure. It's amazing. It's high-pitched. Sweet. Here, are you saying I'm full of gold? Yeah. <laughs> We've scaled it up, What we the panning that Ellen and I did yesterday. Excellent. We've scaled right, it up. Just what you promised. Industrial scale. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so just heaving shovelfuls of, um, <clears throat> of this stuff in. Well, it's day three and gold fever has struck the rough science camp. All the scientists have come up to the river today. There's furious activity over there, sluicing and all sorts of things. Whoa. And Jonathan, you've got your metal detector. Yep. This is the big test. Let's go find nuggets. Okay. Michael's making a second sluice box to maximise gold production. Keeps on hopping about, doesn't it? Yeah. And the detector. Well... The detector's detecting, but is it gold? I think I think water's getting into it. Right. That's why it keeps on changing now. Probably. Denise, it's not going to explode. Don't worry. <laughs> They're going to blow you up. <laughs> We've got a better gradient. <laughs> <laughs> What's the price of gold on the market at the moment? It's the end of the day at the river. The punga wood's carefully removed. It should contain that elusive gold dust. The slices are washed to remove the gold. Ellen's also going to burn them and pan off the ashes, collecting any gold still trapped in the fibres. And Mike B's job is to pan the gold-rich silt left in the bottom of the sluice box. See, we're oh, guys, we're losing it all through the sides. <laughs> It's mid-afternoon on day three, and we've had enough of New Zealand's rain. Everyone retreats to the sawmill for shelter. It's a long old process. Yeah, it doesn't look very much at the moment, but just watch this. That is unquestionably gold. Yeah. And it's not spoiled. I mean, it, it's... It doesn't corrode. It doesn't rust like iron. I mean, when you do get a gold ring that tarnishes, it's the, the other metals in there, like copper, mercury, palladium, and silver. When um, people put carrots on gold, yeah. um, is, th is that what denotes its purity? Yeah, 24 carat gold is 100% pure gold. Right. Yeah. So if we got, say, 12 carat gold, uh, that's 50%, that's half gold. And, and can you tell that by the weight? Is purer gold heavier? Yes. It's taking too long to burn, so we're not going to finish today. But we'll keep doing it, and we'll get to it later. The gold won't melt. We are swiftly running out of what little daylight we have left. So um, what do you reckon? How long is this going to take? I'm going to take this fairly slowly. We don't want to lose what we've got now. Okay. Well, I'd say we've probably got an hour. Is that realistic for you? To separate this, yeah. Yeah, yeah and get it in Kathy's balance, yeah. yeah. But only this this portion. Okay. Remember, we've got loads and loads left in the pond wood to get extra. We might have to just leave that for another day, I think. Yeah, well, it'll be something to look forward to. It will. So, Kathy, big crunch time. How do you feel? 
scared. Really scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look very well prepared. You've got hundreds of little weights here. Mm. Yep, I've got one gram, yep. cut the length of wire to one gram, half a gram, 0.1 of a gram, and even 0 0.02 of a gram. But it won't be that sensitive, I'm sure. Okay, well, shall we get in our guys and see how they've done? Moment of truth. Yeah. All right. Gold diggers, walk this way. <sighs> Mike carrying his booty. Well, I think the biggest collective achievement of the last three days has been that there's been no reported incidents of trench foot, which, given the weather, I think it's so very well done. Now, first to our metal detector, Jonathan. He made a metal detector that did detect. It did. It was a sense. thorough success. It only detected a large tin and not a large nugget of gold, but that's splitting hairs. You gold diggers have made a tremendous effort. Can we see what the fruits of your labours are? This is like gold dust, this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is very definitely gold. It is, isn't it? It's three and a half grand. <laughs> you dropped it now, Mike. You said five earlier. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, we're ready. Okay, and now you've got to hold it while I start to balance it at the other end of it. All right. What are you going to go for first? I'll go for half a grand first. Oh. It's more than half a gram. Okay, let it move a bit Bad more. Luck, <laughs> what are you adding now? That's 0.1 of a gram. Oh, maybe yeah. that. So it's between half, 0.5 and 0.6 of a gram now. I believe you. The challenge was to make accurate scales, so we need to check just how good they are. And I'm glad I didn't tell you about this before when you were talking all that while. <laughs> An electric scale. Mike, could I have that little pa the pan and then we can just set it all up and make sure that it is at zero grams. There we go. Kathy says there's between 0.5 and 0.6 grams of gold. How close is she? That's You're spot on. You're spot on. <laughs> Now, here's the good news. You have 0.5 a, a gram of gold, possibly more when you get out the gold from the punga. Mm -hmm. By the end of the series, we want you to have made something from pure New Zealand gold. Uh, a plate. <laughs> <laughs> no. Something that we can all see, ideally, without a microscope. So over the next few weeks, you are going to have to use increasingly ingenious methods to get gold out of those hills. But I think you should all be very, very pleased with yourself. It was absolutely brilliant three days in very difficult circumstances. So well done. Well done. Yeah. 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 Join us next time on Rough Science. In the next episode of Rough Science, we go industrial in our search for gold. We're up against one big problem here, and it isn't our fault. There are strange goings-on in the forest as Ellen searches for earthquakes, and Mike B tries his hand at making cosmetics. Oh. Oh, I don't think Ellen's going to want to put that on her. For a free Rough Science booklet and details of Open University programmes, call 0870 900 9581 or log on to www.open2.net. <laughs>